Man, it makes me mad that they're, I'm giving these people ad revenue. <laughs>Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. You are tuned into Sports Betting Truth with me, William Lease, and this is another video in my reaction series where I watch a sports betting related video on YouTube and I give my instant reaction to it. And today we are taking a request from Michael Horton who requested that I cover pick dogs. Now I've talked about these clowns on this channel before. They are a touting website who give out scamming, lying picks full of a bunch of lying, scamming touts that have no skills at all and therefore have to swindle people out of their money by selling sports betting picks. Otherwise, they would probably be flipping burgers at a McDonald's somewhere. No offense to those of you who work at McDonald's. I actually have more far more respect for fast food workers than I do sports betting touts. I think sports betting touts are the lowest of the low on the totem pole. Only politicians, I think, are worse than touts. Anyway... Let's look at some of these pick dog videos to see what we have in store today. Oh man, it makes me very ill to be on this page. This is a touting page. Pick dogs is a tout website. They are touts. Before I begin this video, I want to say that touts are unemployable. They have no marketable skills at all. Therefore, they have to make a living scamming and swindling people out of their money, selling them picks that aren't going to win in the long run to people and scamming people out of their money. That's the only thing they can do to make money. Some of these videos are probably too long to react to, so how about I uh, rapid fire three or four of these bad boys and uh, I'll react to them. So let's start with a free NBA parlay for today. Hi, it's Mitch from PickDogs.com and it is Tuesday, January 11th, 2022, here with your NBA Pick Dogs Parlay. Of course, here on YouTube, I do tons of free pick videos, so be sure to subscribe to our channel while I try and... So here's the truth about free picks, and I've made a video about this in the past if you want to look up that video about free picks. Anytime a tout gives out free picks, they're not intended to win, guys. If anything has value at all, it's not going to be given away for free. And the problem with touts is that they give out these free picks to give themselves credibility, to make it look like they know what they're talking about. That's the point of them giving out these free picks. They are intended to lose. I guarantee you all I did was flip a coin for these picks and then maybe looked up uh, both teams' schedules uh, to come up with like a, a – credible sounding paragraph uh, like he understands both teams and understands the matchup and everything but they put no effort in their free picks at all they are designed to make them sound smart and like they know what they're talking about so therefore when you follow their free picks and they lose then you're like oh they're losing because i need to pay for this guy's picks and then they go to their website and start paying for picks Free picks are the top of the funnel. Touts operate on a funnel system. The free picks hook you in, and then you move down the funnel to start paying for their picks. It's a ploy. Do not follow free picks. They are absolutely worthless. And I give out. That's not possible. But if you're looking for the games I like the best, the ones I'm most confident, or if you're looking for best bets from some of the top handicappers. In the Proving my point. There you go. Already shilling the premium picks, a.k.a. the paid picks, before he even gives out the freed pick. There you go. Free picks are worth nothing, guys. Nothing. I would say this pen I have in my hand, this MGM Grand Ballpoint pen, is worth more than the free picks this clown is giving out. The world, head on over to our website, pickdogs.com. Click on the premium picks tab. But you know what? Let's go ahead and visit this website. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is like a who's who of all the idiots and dipshits in the touting industry. Like, these, a lot of these names are very recognizable to me, who is very familiar with touts over the years. Oh, man. What is this, like, Pokemon? Gotta catch them all when it comes to, like, the worst touts in the industry? These are all a bunch of clowns, guys. You really think these guys know what they're talking about? Like, this is a who's who of the biggest idiots when it comes to sports betting. Like, people you should not follow. Uh, but yeah, like, would you trust any of these people? Like this guy, Alex Smart, he has a very pixelated avatar of him on his webpage. If he puts that much effort into his headshot, you think he's going to put any effort into his pics? Really? Anyway, um, but yeah, like, how much are these clowns charging? I don't know. <laughs> Let's click. A oh, man, look at this guy. Um, Chris Ruffalo. How much is this idiot charging? Probably too much. If it's greater than zero, it's probably too much. 
Okay, you can buy a Tuesday college basketball five pack for $50. Oh, but $70 guaranteed. So why on earth would you buy the, not spend the 20 more dollars to get the guaranteed picks, right? So you can buy not guaranteed picks. So you're basically rolling the dice for 50 bucks or you can pay 70 bucks and get the guaranteed picks. Okay, I'm gonna explain this to you guys. For those of you who haven't watched my past videos, why would somebody sell non-guaranteed picks and guaranteed picks? It's a marketing ploy. It's part of the tout funnel. If free picks are the top of the funnel, then these $50 non-guaranteed picks are the middle of the funnel. So the person's like, you know, this guy looks like he knows what he's talking about. I'm just going to spend the 50 bucks and save the 20 bucks because they're probably still going to win. And when these $50 picks don't win, when they don't win and you're losing money, you're like, oh, no wonder I'm losing because they're not guaranteed. It's a step ladder. It's a funnel. And so therefore, once you buy the $50 package and it loses, then you progress to the $70 guaranteed package, right? Let's get to today's NBA Pick Dogs Parlay. Of course, be sure to smash that like button. Let us know you like what we're doing here at our Pick Dogs channel. For the first team in our two-team parlay, I'm going to go to the game between the Wizards and the Thunder. The Wizards, you know, a team that we've made so much money on over the years because they kind of fly under the radar, but can, you know, continue to be a playoff team. We saw it last year, right? They made the playoffs. Nobody saw that coming. Well, we didn't care if they made the playoffs or not. What we cared is they covered a lot of spreads in the process because they just weren't getting a lot of respect. Meanwhile, the, the Thunder have been a team that doesn't get a lot of respect this season. They're not winning many games at all. In fact, they're headed towards a pick in the NBA draft lottery this year, but I'll tell you what they're also doing. Filling our pockets with cash. I think they cash again here. I'm going to take the points with the Thunder as the first half of our parlay. The second half of the... Okay, so that was based on absolutely nothing. Nothing. He said... The Wizards have won a lot of money for us over the years, which is his analysis of, that was literally his analysis of the Wizards. And then the Thunder, he's like, they're not getting a lot of respect this year. That, so he's like, I'm taking the Thunder. That was based on absolutely nothing, nothing. Second half of the parlay, going to head to Chicago, where the Bulls are taking on the Pistons, and the Bulls laying a massive number here against the Pistons, who of course are playing on the back-to-back. -back. They played the Jazz uh, on Monday, but the thing is, is that you know this Bulls team absolutely just rolling. I made a video on this before, but the main way touts make money besides from uh, their selling their scam picks is sportsbook affiliations. These touts get a cut of your losses. I have had sportsbooks come to me in my email box wanting me to recruit viewers of my channel to sign up for their sportsbooks and they tell me I will get a cut of the player's revenue, aka losses. I don't do that. I'm not going to sell my audience out. But that is the motivation behind this right here. Right now, and while, you know, the Pistons, uh, you know, are young and up and coming, 13 and a half points the Pistons are getting in this one, and that is an absolute ton. The book's obviously fishing for action on the Pistons, making this one a little bit more difficult because you have the team in the Bulls that's kind of getting it done, and you have the team that they're fishing for action for on the uh, on the Pistons, but they are giving you a ton of points. That's how much they want that action. Oh, man, it makes it a little tough. I'm going to take the points here with the Pistons, though, and that'll be the second half of the parlay. So today's... Okay, he says the books are fishing for action, but what does that mean? Like, how does that say, oh, I'm going to take the Pistons? Is the line moving away from the Bulls and towards the Pistons, meaning like the Pistons getting more and more points since the line open? He doesn't explain. So if he hasn't explained anything in the first two legs of this parlay, then what, why would you trust his picks? NBA Pick Dogs Parlay. I'm going to go with the Oklahoma City Thunder plus the points and the Detroit Pistons plus the points. Of course, if you like our YouTube, be sure to check out our premium YouTube. Based on absolutely nothing. All right, let's go to another video. Jeez. Man, it makes me mad that they're, I'm giving these people ad revenue. <laughs> but um, Kansas, Iowa State, different guy. Let's see if this guy um, has any kind of insight into why he's picking whichever one he's going to pick here. What's up, everyone? It's Chris from PickDogs.com. Here with your free pick in the Kansas versus Iowa State college basketball matchup going down Tuesday, January 11, 2022. 
But let's get to this one between Kansas and Iowa State. And uh, Iowa State, 13-2 and two on the year, 9-6 and six against the number. Meanwhile, Kansas, 12-2 and two straight up, 7-6-1 and one against the number. And uh, Iowa State coming off of a... Uh, who gives a crap what they are against the spread? That's the past. Sportsbooks adjust. 9-6 and six against the spread, 7-6-1 and six one against the spread. That would matter if sportsbooks didn't adjust and assign the same ratings to both teams throughout the year and didn't change that. But the fact, books do adjust, guys. So however a team has done in a 15-game sample size, which is already pretty low against the spread, should not matter. And he wasted about 15 seconds of this video covering something so pointless. The win one, lose one train, alternating wins and losses in each of their last four games, culminating with a uh, 79-66 loss on the road at Oklahoma in their last matchup. I was on Iowa State in that one, and uh, they just did not get the job done. Meanwhile, credit where credit's due. That's something touts don't do a lot, and that's talk about their losses, so at least he did that. Kansas, another team I was on last time out. Falling short, having their eight-game win streak snapped with a 75-67 loss at Texas Tech, a game where the, uh, the Jayhawks were laying seven and uh, just flat out lost the game. All right, he's talking about what they did in their last game, which is fine, but how does that pertain to who you're picking for this game, right? To, to, to the better team in Texas Tech on that night. But, uh, you know, you look at, at this matchup, I guess what I'm trying to say is anybody can go look up their schedule and how they've done in their past game, right? How, how does the way they played in their previous game pertain to who he's picking in this one? The favorite, 5-0 and against the spread in the last five meetings, and I know a lot of those came when Iowa State was... So 5-0 and against the spread in the last five meetings. So we're talking about a sample size of five, right? Five involving games played three years ago, right? One of the games in that sample is a game played three years ago. 5-0 and against spread. So why? Why did you stop at 5? Why didn't you stop at 6? Why didn't you stop at 4? Why didn't you go back to how they've done in their past 20 games, right? Why, why the arbitrary end, uh, stopping point of 5, right? Because 5-0 and looks sexy. It makes it look like you know what you're talking about. But it's a sample size of 5. That trend is going to cause people to bet on the favorite in this one, but it is worthless. Go watch my video about trends as to why that is completely stupid when it comes to handicapping this game. It's a lot worse than they are now. The problem is, is that, you know, you look at the home road splits, um, Iowa State's only putting up 65 points per game on the road this season, allowing 68.5, and Allen Fieldhouse for Kansas they're winning games by an average of 23.1 points per game this season. Now, I know a lot of those are coming against lesser opposition. We can't forget this is a Kansas team that blew out a pretty good Nevada team by 27 on their home. Nevada's not pretty good, guys. They're not. And uh, he's talking about how Iowa State's playing on the road, how Kansas plays at home. Points per game is such a worthless stat in basketball. That's why I use offensive and defensive efficiencies when you're trying to do anything basketball-related because how a team plays tempo-wise is going to influence the whole per-game thing. So if you have a team running a Princeton offense and then a team running the Loyola Marymount offense back in the 90s, you're going to have two different per-game stats. And that's why I hold this whole per-game thing as garbage. And who has Iowa State played on the road? Who has Kansas played at home? All of that matters floor they have the, the non-covers against george mason and stephen f austin who have covered against the bigger teams this season but uh in another spot against the power six team the uh the jayhawks won by 37 against missouri and uh i'm not saying that we see a 37 point win here for kansas but i think they do cover the 12 so i'm going to lay the points with kansas in this one and that's going to be my free pick but if you're looking for best bets for myself or any of our other world-class handicappers check out pick dogs premium yeah let's not so um Again, another one of these free pick videos that gave out absolutely no worthwhile advice at all. A bunch of I think, I think, I think, and a bunch of very elementary, very simple stats. That's how these free picks work, and honestly, this is how their paid picks work as well. They just th This guy probably just flipped a coin, it landed on heads, and he's like, okay, heads, that means I'm going to take Kansas at minus 12. That's exactly what's going on here, guys. And then he looks at their schedule, looks at a few stats, comes up with a minute or two worth of talk to make it sound like he knows what he's talking about, and then says, I'm on Kansas. But that's how their paid picks work, too. 
They, he doesn't know anything about Iowa State. He doesn't know anything about Kansas. He doesn't know anything about college basketball. That's how touts work. They try to make it seem like they know what they're talking about by using very elementary statistical talk because the average person is not going to realize that statistical talk is going to be elementary and basic. And that is the problem. But what actual advice did he give out in this, in this video to make it truly sound like he knew what he was talking about in this game? Right? Anybody can say, oh, this team's given up X points per game on the road or at home. This team covered against George Mason in Nevada. Like, how does it pertain to this game? Anyway, let's do one more uh, video. All right, this guy looks like he is a, a high school student. So let's go ahead and watch his uh, Dayton versus St. Louis pick. Hi, it's Ron from PickDogs.com here with your free pick in the St. Louis and Dayton college basketball matchup on Tuesday, January 11th, 2022. Before we get to that free pick, I want to mention that here at Pick Dogs, we do more free pick videos than anyone else on YouTube, so make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to check out our free sportsbook offer in the description below, as these offers are... Do you really want to give these clowns a cut of your losses? Let's not, so let's skip uh, ahead. Now, St. Louis, the Billikens, they are 10-4 and four on the season, coming off back-to-back -back wins at home, they took down Richmond in their A-10 opener, 76-69, and then they went back home uh, for a game on January 8th, 68-67 win over Iona. So two strong wins there for St. Louis. They also have a nice win against an ACC school in Boston College. Before that, they beat Boise State on the road in overtime. So some strong wins for a St. Louis team that was ranked outside the top 100 going into the season in Ken Palm ratings. The four losses on the year, Memphis, UAB, Belmont, and Auburn. At least this guy mentioned Ken Palm, unlike the guy in the last video. you got to give him credit for that. Really, those are all four teams in the top 50 in Ken Palm, so not bad losses by any means. Uh, St. Louis is ranked in the top 100 in both offensive and defensive efficiency. They get to the free throw line a lot. That's sixth ranked in getting to the free throw line. They shoot pretty well from the free throw line as well, 44th in the country in free throw percentage. And they're also a really good offensive rebounding team, 14th ranked in offensive rebounding percentage in the country. So a strong start to the year for St. Louis. You look at Dayton, they're 9-6. and six. It's been a bit of an inconsistent year, and I say a bit pretty lightly. I mean, it's been really inconsistent. You, you have losses against Austin P, Lipscomb, and UMass Lowell. You also have a win over Kansas, of all teams. So Dayton's been through it all this season. They're coming off a win over George Washington. They dominated that game 83-58. They're now 1-1 one one in A-10 play. They also lost to VCU um, at home, 53-52. But Dayton also ranked in the top 100 in both offense and defense. Uh, but they do have a problem turning the ball over. Right now, ranked 330th in the country in turnovers. Turning the ball over on 22.4% of possessions. That's a little dangerous against the St. Louis team that can force some turnovers. Ranked in the uh, top 110 in forcing turnovers. I worry about that for Dayton, but other than that, you know, one of the better two-point shooting teams, not the best three-point shooting team in Dayton, uh, but the offense has done a pretty good job, and another team that really wasn't projected too much going into the season. Now, Dayton opens as a small favorite, but I think the wrong team is favored here. I think even though Dayton is home, I think St. Louis is the better team in almost all facets of the game. Maybe, uh, you know, defensive rebounding, Dayton has the edge, but uh, other than that, I think St. Louis is just the better side, and I like that they get to the free throw line a lot. So I'm going to take the points with St. Louis. I think that they are a live dog here, and that's going to be my free pick. But if you're looking for my best bets or best bets from some of the best... All right, so I'm going to give this guy some credit for using Ken Palm stats, but the, the problem with this video I have is that it pertains to the video I made in the past about the danger of manual research, and that is he pretty much just went to their two Ken Palm pages and just ran down their stats and like, oh, okay, that's fine. The problem I have with that is that yeah, you can summarize their stats like he did for the entire three minutes of this video. All I did was summarize their stats, but how does that all, put that all into a blender. How does that all relate to the line that is Dayton minus three, right? So that's the danger of manual research is that I call that the kitchen sink approach to handicapping a game. It's like, how does St. Louis's free throw, getting to the free throw line, or how does Dayton's turnovers, how does St. Louis's ability to force turnovers, how does that all pertain to whether or not St. Louis plus three or Dayton minus three is a good pick? And that's 
honestly why you need some sort of model to be able to process, process all that information. And that's where this guy falls short. Again, he is at least better than the last two videos we watched that based their picks on absolutely nothing at all. But anybody can go to Ken Palm's website and compare the two teams' statistics. But anything found on a website website like Ken Palm is already going to be baked into the line and therefore any value that is uh, gained from just comparing the two statistical summaries of the teams is going to be sucked out by the time you finish watching this video. So again, he puts more effort into this, but again, that's how these touts make it look like they know what they're talking about. Anybody can go to Ken Palm's website and summarize the statistics of the two teams playing to make it seem like you know what you're talking about on what basically was a coin flip uh, on the way you made your pick. So that is the issue I have with this video. So overall, no value to be gained from pick dogs. They're just a bunch of scamming, lying touts, uh, worthless. Whether they're free picks or they're paid picks, you're wasting your money on your, their paid picks. You're wasting your time watching their free picks videos. No value to be gained on this crap. And this is exactly why I hate touts. Just garbage, 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 garbage. All right, so as you can see, just a bunch of crap, and that is the type of crap you see from touts everywhere on YouTube, not just pick dogs. They are just one of many, unfortunately. They are like rats in a sewer. They just keep coming out of nowhere because, like I said, with sports betting becoming as mainstream as it is now in 2022, you have a lot of people who think they are experts when it comes to sports betting and want to monetize that. There is no shortage of touts out there. Do not give them your money. Do not sign up for their sports books with their affiliate bonuses. Do not interact with them at all. They are worthless. You will come out ahead. Even if you don't know what you're doing betting on sports, you will come out ahead in terms of time and money by making picks yourself rather than relying on a touts free or paid picks. Do not pay touts at all. Pick dogs, shame on you, you swindling, scamming, lying pieces of 